Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Mythgard in Middle-Earth. My name is Corey Olson, joined as always by my friend Grifflet, and here we are on the second layer of Minas Tirith, having completed, more or less completed, level one of Minas Tirith last week. So here is, well, not last week, week before last. Last week, I was in San Antonio for Texmoot, which was awesome fun. Uh... Uh, so great to see folks down in Texas. Texas is one of our longest running regional moots. Uh, it was our fifth Tex moot this year, uh, which seems kind of amazing, actually. Um, but uh, anyhow, yes, last time Grifflet uh, completed level one of Minas Tirith. And so we are moving on up uh, and uh, seeing seeing what's going to happen. Grifflet is checking out the uh, his sort of wondering if the captain up there lecturing was going to... Uh, uh, notice the uh, the small person in the ranks here in the back, but as Grivel doesn't have a spear, he doesn't fit in very well anyway. So anyhow, here we are back in Minas Tirith. Um, what do they call this layer? Uh, this is the, oh, it's the soldiers tier, right? Of course, it's the soldiers tier. So we were at the workers tier, is the one that we more or less finished. Um, ah, right now I see there's the theater, the stone theater there at the bottom or at the top. Bottom level is what I mean. Like the bottom, down in the bottom corner of the city. Yeah, that's interesting. Look at this. Now I like recognize features on the Minas Tirith map, having had my tour with Burgo. All right. So let us get back to work. So I think, have I discovered this yet? I don't think I have. Tour in the second, Son of Thorondir. Okay. Oh, hang on. Okay, I have discovered the plaque of, and his ankles. Let's see, what does he look like? See, one interesting thing about the ruling stewards, and I was reflecting on this when I was having conversations at Textmood actually about Fourth Age, uh, about the Fourth Age, and uh, was kind of thinking through something that I hadn't really thought through before. And that is I was thinking about Eowyn's choice to give up battle, right? Uh, and to go and to make a garden. And of course, Faramir also is giving up battle. Um, it's very unlikely that Faramir is ever going to see battle again after his experience. Um, so like the time that we see... So basically by... Uh, almost this point um, in uh, uh, in the actually no by this point in the story because we just got him he was just wounded and brought in right um, is where we are in the Lotro story with Faramir um, no or did he not go out again I'm forgetting which trip of Faramir uh, we had but in any case um, uh, Faramir after the pyre of Denethor, he's never going to go into battle ever again. Because, of course, that's one of the jobs of the stewards. It's one of the reasons you have a steward, right? Is so that the king can, in fact, go out and lead his armies into battle when he needs to go out into battle. So Aragorn, of course, is going to do a fair bit of battling, um, we are told, over the rest of his career, over the rest of his reign as King Elessar, which means that Faramir will not. Faramir will stay home. Faramir and Eowyn will stay home um, and mind the shop while King Elessar is out in the field. Um, so, dramatic statues of non-ruling stewards would be peaceable. Wouldn't They wouldn't be able to show them in armor and stuff. Um, so, I was, it just helped me to reflect on this this sort of the odd sort of transition right uh the the ruling steward um whose you know job is to be um you know whose job is to be the one who stays home and doesn't go into battle uh in order to ensure that like there's somebody to uh you know assist in the transition should the king die in battle uh and um anyway <laughs> I see. <laughs> there's, there, there's. You think there's a rave going on? Uh, yeah, with the flickering windows here. I, that looks 
Very likely, actually. Oh man, lots of excitement here on this on the on the soldiers' tier. They know how to party on the soldiers' tier. Um, exactly, Drew Inspired. That's the fun, right? That's one of the fun things about this, that Eowyn eventually winds up with the job she originally rejected. Caretaker of the people while the king is away fighting. Yes, exactly. She, she had, That's like the job that she ends up embracing, right? She and Faramir both end up embracing that. Um, you know, and you think about... Uh, the, then thinking about that from Faramir's point of view and how Faramir is, uh, uh, how Faramir uh, is, you know, the whole wizard's pupil thing, right? How he's not like out there leading the troops and he's not, you know, uh, you know, and his, his father kind of, uh, you know, taunting him for uh, being a scholar instead. Uh, and of course, like that, is what he gets to like live the rest of his life doing. Like, in fact, he was doing it right all along. He was uh, preparing himself for the role that he actually would go on to go on to to live. Anyway, anyway, uh, less talking, more walking and talking. Okay, so we're just in a little area here. I know we had. We're still looking for opportunistic thieves. Is there some up? around here yeah and we're meeting with the cloudy heads at the hall of air which i think is not here yeah it's way up there so we won't we won't get back to the cloudy heads for quite a while meeting oriat for our duel which i'm quite looking forward to that is up there so okay so let's start down in this direction uh, let's go south and then we'll go the other way because the other way is where the ramp is and so when we finish we'll be the readier to just head up the ramp okay so I'm strolling around I'm missing my friend Burgle though I guess I could get him back hey Burgle you want to look at the second circle let's do it Okay, what do we think? I gotta, I gotta keep my eye out for plaques, I like this one. Look at the guest barracks. Guest barracks. That's really interesting. I guess you would need guest barracks, wouldn't you, if somebody else brought like a large military escort? Um, I mean, even like Imre Hill's knights would need a guest barracks, wouldn't they? Okay. All right, it's just a fountain, or not really a fountain. A little pool of water. It's for horses to drink out of, you think? No, they've got separate watering troughs. Okay. Can I get into the guest barracks? No. I want to see what the party is upstairs, but I guess, uh, I don't Had enough practice? You're okay? Sort of chilling? Getting into a zen state prior to the battle? That's good. That's good. Okay. Mm, look at this little alleyway. Up under the wall? Did your family leave the city too? Oh, was this kid is comforting the guy who's sitting on the steps? That's nice of him. Okay, it's the wall overlooking... It's the wall of the second tier. I wonder... The houses down there. They go... Do they only go back this far? Are they very thin and broad? I'm having a rave up here, too. Oh, man. It's just a party on the second tier. Like, how far back do they go? Down there, I, I mean. I guess they could go all the way... Like, one story. They could go all the way down underneath the tier here. So they could go back. It'd be all underground, so you wouldn't have any, uh, you wouldn't have any natural light. It probably wouldn't damage the structural integrity much. Okay. 
And this isn't a very... I mean, this is... This wall... Okay, you wouldn't need to defend it, really. So it's good for views, such as this beautiful afternoon view looking out towards Lasarnach here. You can see the Pelinar. You can see over the wall, but not much over the wall. Is that the Great Gates down there? No. It's not the Great Gates. Okay. So I'm just trying to orient myself here a little bit. What is this guy, a shield vendor? Can I interest you in one of my nice shields? Don't ask me where I got them. Or what happened to the people who are carrying them? I mean, he does realize that you don't just, like, purchase and buy a random shield. It kind of, like, means something. <laughs> okay. Right? It's like a coat rack for armor. I guess you could put this on outside. Seems a little... Cheeky. Like when you come out in your Under Armour skivvies and get dressed outside here. I know, it's barracks. Or, like, maybe these are officers' quarters here on the soldiers' tier. What is this big mound of firewood? Looks like somebody just ordered a cord of wood and they just dropped it. And then left you to stack it yourself. But nobody's stacking the wood. Yeah, I see you pacing around looking at your men, and that's fine, but like, why is nobody stacking the firewood? It builds character. Or so I've been told. I, I don't know. A little, little alley. Oh, look, a littler alley. You can sneak in there. But if even a halfling can't get in, it's uh, probably not too much to look at. Making sure I don't miss any plaques or thieves. Waiting to see if there are any side quest opportunities here. Huh. Back up onto the wall here. Okay. It's a little uneventful down here. No plaques, no statues, no side quests. Ah, <clears throat> the soldier's pub. Achadon, captain of the garrison. Ah, oh, you're one of the captains. Ah, cool. I don't get to talk to you, though. You want to actually speak to me? I just know what your name is. Hope I better discover the plaque of the splintered shield, as well as the actual splintered shield. The splintered shield is a fascinating name. So it's a name that sort of ironically celebrates defeat in battle. Shields shall be splintered, I guess if it's the shields of the enemy. Do they also have a, another one called the Red Day or something? Wow. It's a really nice shield collection. All the shields of Gondor. It's lovely. Who has the Numenorean Star Shield? I don't remember seeing that one. You know, this one. The big down pointy star, the Numenorean star. Oh, it might be related to the shield from the Mordor quests in the history of Dorthond. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Okay. All right, so, oh, getting a little rowdy here in the soldier's tavern.
plenty of casks laid in. That's good. Okay. Now, a little, uh, are those stacks of coins? We're having a little game down here, are we? Is this the... Mm. Oh, a little... Whoa! Hey there, sketchy dude! You look like a ranger of Athelion. Nice surcoat. Just saying. Totally mistook you for someone... Uh... Oh, that's Burgle levitating. Well, I'll leave Burgle to keep an eye on you. Okay. Oh, what is, uh, what is... Oh, man! It's Fight Club! Oh! <laughs> oh! Yikes! Okay. <laughs> Hence the guy with all the coins up top. Okay. All right. Yeah, I guess we better not talk about this. Oh, there's another guy with coins. No, he has fewer coins than the guy up above. Does he realize the other guy is taking a bigger cut before they even get down here? Wow. And then you got the one spectator drinking heavily. Okay, so what interests me here is that uh, the main thing that interests me about Fight Club is that um, is their sartorial choices. I guess there's something about fisticuffs and bare chests that makes one want to wear brightly colored cummerbunds. Is this true in life? Has everyone else found this in their experience? That, you know... I mean, like, why are they wearing bright red cummerbunds like Corsairs? Yeah, we could... Well, it'd be less a reenactment than an experiment, really, Drow Snake. Um, yeah, Edith says that uh, she herself refuses to engage in fisticuffs unless she's we wearing her bright red cummerbund. Yeah, I, I mean... Basically, I'm trying to figure... what the, I'm trying to solve that eternal mystery, right? Um, are the Corsairs, do the Corsairs wear brightly colored cummerbunds? Um, like, does wearing brightly co colored cummerbunds make them pugnacious? Uh, or do they wear bright cummerbunds because they're already pugnacious? You know what I mean? Like, what, what? it's like a chicken and egg question, basically. If you wear a bright cummerbund, does it make you want to fight and, you know, pillage? Does the impulse to fight and pillage have its source in the cummerbund? So you're a, you're a Ranger Vithilian bouncer? Okay. Um... <laughs> That's fun. But I still no quests. Oh, little lattic space. What's going on up here? Oh, oh, is this where the like innkeeper lives? Got a little apartment space, a little pied a terre you can uh, you can rent here in Minas Tirith. Oh, this is a whole little condo complex here. Look at this. This is oh, okay. So this is a 
These are the room rentals. They actually do have rooms at this inn. I thought it was just a tavern. A little, <laughs> a little rent a cubicle. A little walk through rent a cubicles. I hope this one is cheap. That everybody has to. Oh yeah, this guy got the cheap one. That we have to walk through and not just nosy burglars. Okay, right. Oh, so they've got a whole little suite of cubicle rooms. That's cute. Huh. Oh, wait, wait a second. Who's in there? Oh, more cubicles. Okay, gotcha. Well, that's interesting. It's a clearly a modern innovation in that, you know, we have this huge cavernous stone structure, as you would expect to see in Minas Tirith, um, with really high ceilings. Speaking of which, let's go higher. Um, and, uh, and then they've built this whole network of wooden partitions in order to make their little, uh, their little rooms, which shows this place didn't really have rooms before. What are we looking at? No, oh, it doesn't go all the way down to Fight Club, guys. The real action is downstairs. Okay, we just overlook the overlook the main floor of the tavern. This place is huge. Oh, that's really interesting, Holger. Holger says he keeps wondering where all the people went, because he's used to seeing this in the uh, in the midsummer uh, version of it, um, and that's. That's cool, Holger, right? In other words, you're 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 having exactly the experience that you sort of should have. Uh oh. I'm stuck. I'm lagging and I've joined with Burgo. I have become Burgo. Oh dear. I'm in trouble. Oh, there we go. Phew. I was actually stuck inside Burgo's chest cavity, which is uncomfortable, I'm sure, for the both of us. Okay, all right, a little archery practice. You guys are doing great. We're practicing standing around with bows too. There's only so much standing around that I think will be useful. I'm not saying it will be useful at all. Oh, the captain's quarters, huh? Do you have a plaque for that? By any chance? It's not one of my collections. What am I collecting again? Hang on, I gotta, find, I gotta remember what I'm collecting. I'm collecting Gondor Deeds. Central Gondor, Eastern Gondor. Old Anorian? Yeah, okay. I'm collecting, I'm collecting captains. Oh, look at that. Only one captain short. Ormitar, captain of the Citadel. Well, I suspect I know where to find him. Guests. Oh, the guest barracks was one of the... It was a, a guest things. Okay. The House of Rest. The High Guest House. Oh, where, like, really important people come. Okay. And the High Stables, where really important people's horses stay. Uh, gotcha. Gotcha. I bet you Shadowfax is there. Okay. The Masters of Minas Tirith. I only met two of those. Uh, the fellow halls. I've only seen no two. Got two of those. Uh, oh yeah, the old Anorian farm. Curse you. Um, taverns. Okay, marching right through the taverns in order. Apparently, that's good. Three out of thirteen. So I got a bunch of taverns left. Vaults. Two out of six vaults. Okay. Wardens. I just only met one warden. I got the wardens and the captains confused in my head. Quests. Wow. Still 19 more quests, huh? And I have only find 10 of the 33 of the line of kings and 6 of the 25 stewards. Still a lot of statues to find. Okay. 
All right. I love these. Minas Tirith is just like warming to the heart of a completionist. I can tell you. All right. So this is where the uh, captains live. And we've got another statue here. Yeah, I was going to say we must be towards the end. All right, who is this? Ah, Baragon, son of Baron. I was always fond of the steward Baron. The Mumak and Keep? Is that another bar? Is this the captain's pub? Oh, hang on. Hang on. At Texmoot. I never... I've... I, confession. I've never learned to read Tengwar, but I just learned it this weekend. M. U with the upward hook. M. A. K. Yeah, I'll get that. Mumak. That's just a letter A. Which... Is that one of those abbreviations? Like, um, shortcuts. And, right, so this is a downward stem, which means it's a plosive, and then two bows, which means it's voiced. Uh, closed bow to the right on the plosive means a P, so that's, that's the B. There's a voiced P. So B... That's an R with an A, B A R. Uh, and then the. Yeah. Um, wait a second. They call it the Mumak and Keep. It doesn't say keep at all. single one down. That's a D. That says Barad. It says Muak, and then the letter A, and then Barad. Which means keep, of course. Yeah. So they actually have, the sign is actually in Sindarin. Uh... The, the entire sign, like the, yeah, so you've got the, the word Mumak, right, which is, um, it is not Quenya, it's not in Quenya mode. Um, you can tell because see the tecta up above the, the words here, the, where, which indicate the vowels. In Quenya mode, those come before. I wonder why they put the carrier. Oh, I know why they put the carrier. So, um, so this is so this is a, up up at the top. Oh, uh oh, hang on, I lost it. Come on, come back to me. Virgil, you're in the way. Okay, never mind. Okay, so you see, like, so look at the end of the of the of the mumak. So mumak is you've got a descender because it's a plosive, and then you've got the left facing bow that's closed. Uh, so that's the K or the C. Hard C, obviously. Um, so you've got these three dots above. That means that 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 means an A vowel. That's the vowel indicator, the vowel diacritic. Uh, that means an A. Um, and in Quenya mode, the they put the vowels on the ones before uh, the vowel comes. So that would be like uh, this. This is M, uh, small stem, two bows closed. Um, M. That's a K and that's an A. So if this were in Quenya mode, that would be like MKA, like Mka, basically, which wouldn't make any sense in Quenya at all. Uh, so you can tell that it's not Quenya mode. You can tell that it's in Cinderin mode. Um, but the interesting thing is this part. So the little upwards hook is the U, indicates the U. 
but you don't have to put a carrier. The the, the single stem like this, what, what looks like the stem of letter I in, in English, um, is just a vowel carrier. So like when you don't have, so here you have M, A, K, right? Or, or, you know, the two consonants, M, K with A above the K, indicating there's an A in between those two consonants, um, an A sound in between those two consonants. Um, when you have an A just all by itself, you use a little, a little carrier here, but you'll notice this has a long stem carrier and this is a short stem carrier. Um, so it has, so instead of, they could have just done M, M, K, with the U vowel above the second U and the A vowel above the K, but they didn't do that. Instead, they chose to put a put a put a, a carrier in between the two M's, um, with the U diacritic up above that. Why would they do that instead of just doing M M K with the two vowels? And the reason is they're trying. They're showing the pronunciation. This is you'll notice this is a long carrier compared to the short carrier here. And that means this is a long vowel. So they, they made it with the long carrier and the U vowel to show that that's where the stress falls, mumak. Right, right. Um, yeah, oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. I like it. I like it. And then this is, ba uh, yeah, barad. And notice they've done the same thing. Well, no, they haven't. See. Notice they didn't do the same thing down here, barad, um, because this is just the three consonants, b, a, d, sorry, b, r, d, consonants, a not being in fact a consonant, b, r, d, and then you've got the two a's right up above. So like they could have done mumak, that would look like this. They could have just been like m, m, k with the two consonants, just like they've said b, r, d, uh, and done the two a's up above. Um, but... Uh, uh, but yeah, they didn't do that because there's not um, barad. Uh, it, it's, I mean, like technically it's stress on the first syllable, but it's not a long vowel really. They're both kind of short ah vowels there. So barad, uh, whereas mumak is, uh, that's why mumak, uh, when it's written in English, like, or rather when it's written in Latin letters, um, they, they put the circumflex on the U and that's to show you like, sit on this, right? Uh, sit on this for a while. This is a really long vowel. It's not mumak, right? It's mumak, right? You really, you really, you know, like you sit down and have a beer with that vowel uh, as you, as you go through. And that's what they've indicated there uh, in the, uh, uh, in the, in the Tengwar. All right. Sorry, I am like uh, fascinated by the opportunity to learn uh, more and to like refresh my tenguar. Um, it is, uh, it is great fun. Okay. So here we are. The Mumak Abarad. This is, as I say, presumably the, the captain's pub, which has carpeting. Oh, hey. Oh, look, somebody's getting envious. Of course we find <laughs> they're shooting the Mumak. <laughs> Darafin and Doolin. Shooting the Mumak in the Mumak and Keep. That is fantastic. They've set up a whole fake Mumak with the barrels as legs and the ears. <laughs> it's phenomenal. Phenomenal. They have a strategy. They're shooting at the other pumpkin eyes. <laughs> pumpkin eyes. Oh, that is excellent. Oh, this is absolutely tremendous. Absolutely tremendous. So they came into this pub, which is called the Mumak and Keep. And obviously, they had, they, meaning the owners of the pub... Uh, had a mumak skull with tusks, right? And also apparently some, um, uh, also apparently some uh, taxidermied mumak feet, right? Presumably set up decoratively in some prominent place. It would be really awesome if we could find a wall that has like the shadow outline 
of like where you can see where that skull, skull has been hanging for a really long time. Um, and um, anyway, so they so Dar Duel and, <laughs> clearly Duelin and Terrafin come in here, see the Mumak skull that's, and then they not only have the idea to set up a training dummy with it to practice taking down a, new, a Mumak, but they convince the bartender <laughs> to let them construct a dummy and I, my guess is that this was the result of a negotiation where Darifin and Duelin exerting uh, their unquestionable charisma talked the innkeeper into letting them borrow the Mumok skull as a training dummy uh, in order to, to create to make a training dummy <laughs> but um, he wouldn't let them take it out they were probably going to take it out uh, and set it up outside and he was like, no, you can't walk off with, I'm not going to let you walk off with my very valuable Mumok skull, uh, which is like a key decoration of this place. Um, so they're like, compromise. We'll set up the training dummy right here in the pub. Uh, and everyone else is into it. So they're like, yeah, okay. That sounds great. Oh, man, this is so awesome. Sorry, I'm wanting to, uh-oh. Griffith is de definitely stuck now. I was trying to jump up, and I jumped over. This is why I don't play platformers. Uh-oh. Completely stuck. Poor Griffith. And I'm, like, stuck inside Griffith's head, too. Uh-oh. I'm wedged good and proper. Uh-oh. Yep. Totally stuck. Gonna have to go out and come back. Uh, oops. All right, hang on, hang on. I can't log off while moving. I'm stuck. Because it thinks I'm moving. Because I'm in the middle of jumping. I never land. Okay, hang on. Yeah, that's going to take me out of the city or something, isn't it? I must now wait one minute. Please wait. Okay. We can talk about something. All right, no problem. No problem. Um, yeah, the nearest red circle. Well, we'll find out where that is. That'll be interesting. Time for a lore question, indeed. Okay. Let's see. Um, oh, man. How long did it take to build Minas Tirith? So, that's a fascinating question, Random Wolf Taco. Um, now, we don't know. But this is actually a fascinating question. When exactly was Minas Tirith begun? Right? Now, on the one hand, you could imagine that Minas Tirith grew sort of... Um, uh, you could imagine that Minas Tirith grew gradually. Right? Except... The structure of Minas Tirith is such that it can't have grown as gradually as all that, right? Like it can't have, um, uh, it's just not like a, you know, a town which, oh, here we are. So the red circle is by the front gates, huh? Okay. All right, Bargo, I'm going to mount up here if it's okay with you, and then we'll head up. Um, I, um, back to the pub. Having some lag issues today. Um, it is Minas Tirith, so I suppose that's not an absolute shock. Uh, right, exactly, JJ. Once the tiers are in place, you can repurpose, but you can't really add much. Exactly. You know, this city certainly could not have grown in the way that, say, um, um, in the way that, like, a city that, like, begins by the, you know, by a river landing or something, and, um, uh, and, you know, it first is like a small collection of huts, and then eventually becomes like a sprawling urban metropolis as it grows over time. Like, that's obviously not the case. 
uh, in Minas Tirith. That there's a, a great deal of urban planning, right, that has gone into this. Um, so, did I already go too far? Yes, I did. I thought so. I had this creeping feeling when I'm going through the Wright's Market. I'm like, I think the... I just passed. There it is. Yep. If you hit the Wright's Market, you've gone too far. See, I remembered that. Eventually. Um, so, yeah. Um, Minas Tirith... I mean, the way it's been built up, what I could see is that they came here and they laid out the city, but then they um, they didn't complete it. You know, they didn't finish, um, you know, like it wasn't fully occupied or something. You know, that they only sort of filled out each tier um, as time went on. But, but clearly, you know, the plan... Um, See, no, I don't think it can have grown progressively like that, Tomas, because um, I don't, I don't think so. And also, keep in mind, this is Minas Anor, the city of—I uh, was going to say the city of Minelbil, which of course it was. The city of Anarian is what I mean to say, um, and. Uh, yeah, so this is the city of Anarian. This was built by the Numenorians. Not, by which I mean, not like people who are descendants from Numenor. Yeah, you saw the halfling prince? Yeah, tell me what he was like. Um... Sorry, wait, what was I just saying? I was loosen track of my my flow here um yeah Numenorians. by Numenorian, i don't mean people descended from Numenorians. i mean dudes who just came from numenor right like actual Numenorians who are commuting to this place um and uh Thus, they're not going to go small, you know? <clears throat> they are not going to... start with a cluster of huts. They're going to start with a big city. So I can absolutely believe <clears throat> that the whole structure of Minas Tirith, Minas Anor as was, um, was laid out by... Uh, you know, by Anarian, by Anarian and his folks when they got here. Do I mean it could have been a planned city like Washington, D.C.? Uh, nothing like Washington, D.C. Um, because I, I, it, what I was suggesting is that it's a city that has a good plan instead of a city with a very, very bad plan. Okay, so I was trying to get in closer to be able to see They've, they've like shimmed up the barrels with firewood. This is a rickety construction. Oh man, so good. So good. Um, was there somewhere on Numenor that looked like this? I don't know. Um, I mean... What we have here, and let me not stand right in Duolin's way, though I trust him, you know, he's good. Um, and Burgo and I aren't that tall, so he can shoot over us, obviously. Um, but, um, uh, but no, anyway, the, like, clearly Minas Tirith, like the, the, the shape of Minas Tirith, I mean, there's nowhere else to go in here. This place is crowded. This uh, city has more captains than soldiers. Um, here's, here's the put upon tavern keep. You're a good sport, man. You're a good sport. You won't regret it. Um, 
Anyway, what I was saying is clearly Minas Tirith is very dependent on the local topography, right? I don't think that they're trying to emulate something exactly, though you'll notice <clears throat> that uh, that in the Rings of Power, in their in their design of Numenor, they did kind of backwards engineer that same sort of effect, right? That is to say, they um, uh, they made the city of Armenelos kind of built into the mountainsides. Having a, they made the city of Armenoas. They so in the Rings of Power they imagine the city of Armenoas having a similar kind of relationship with the topography that Minas Tirith does. Like I think there was there was a, a clear inspiration from Minas Tirith in uh, in in that sort of backwards inspiration, if you see what I mean, um, and that um, it makes a lot of sense, right? Because again, these would have been not even first generation. These would have been Numenorean immigrants who were building this place. But the, th the vexed question is when? When exactly did they start? See, one um, uh, mistake, illusion, right, that a lot of people have um, uh, is that when, uh, you know, they came in... Uh, nine ships from Numenor. Um, and people are like, how could nine ships full of people make a whole kingdom? And of course, the answer is they didn't make a whole kingdom, right? Uh, not only were there other non-Numenorean natives here. Ah. More burgle tour guiding. Fantastic. Um, but there were also more um, more Numenorians here already as well. This, How may I help you, friend? You know, Pilargir and points north from Pilargir had already been um, had already been a home to the faithful of Numenor. Um, and so that's why Isildur and Anarion came here. Hall of Watchers, huh? Oh, this is not a discoverable plaque. This is a... Uh, so by discoverable plaque, of course, I mean a plaque uh, that would be entered into evidence at court. Um, and apparently this isn't one of them. Do I have to... Uh, is this a thing in order to get credit for this? Do I have to stand on a particular tile? They're not attached to any deed, Hologra? What's the point? Why would I not? <laughs> Hang on, it, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense, I don't understand. What do you mean I don't have a deed for hulls? Can I just say, if I were designing Minas Tirith, I would have been tempted to put in, like amidst all of these deed collections, right? I would have been tempted to, uh, you know, have like, you know, latrines of Minas Tirith or something like that. Um, but, um, yeah. Anyway, okay. So, so the question is, when was Minas Tirith begun? Minas Anor. Was it begun earlier by the faithful? Long before Anarian got there? And then Anarian kind of took over the leadership of it? Right and made it his city, or not, or were the faithful only at Pelargir, and then they came up and were like, "We're going to begin these cities here." Um, you know, that's not really clear. Ah, Goliskill, yeah, I've heard of you. Everybody's doing fine back home. Took care of things for you. You're welcome. No, stop. You're embarrassing me. Um, up back up to the walls over here, presumably. I'm looking for doors I can get through. You know what has been, uh, you know, thin on the ground on the second tier is side quests. I have not gotten a single quest in the whole second tier. I mean, I know I'm going to get to fulfill a quest. 
I know like that rude guy is waiting for us over on the other side, but armories. What? I don't have an armory indeed. City armory. Look at this. I'm I'm you know one statue. They're having raves without me inside. Not invited to the dance party. Here are the bouncers. Oh. Hey guys, is this where? Hey, you must be Barry Adir. Um, is this where Dal? Is this where uh, Imra Hill hangs out? He's probably upstairs. Maybe. Oh, this is like a Barry Adir only party. Right. Yeah, sorry, Burgle. You have to be named Barry Adir to get into these ones. Okay, what's around here? Oh, this is parking. Yeah, parking can be hard to find in a city like this. You gotta park your wagon. Well, they must have backed that wagon in there really carefully. Very patient horse. Do I think Oriat will truly be waiting for us? Yeah, I bet he will. Ooh, the Hall of Laws, huh? Okay, here's another plaque. Is it a collectible? Uh, no. Not really. Oh, I can't get into the Hall of Laws? I can't. They won't let me in anywhere. Okay, here, from here we can see the Pelon are actually on fire because we're looking towards Osgiliath. Okay. The Hall of Laws, which didn't satisfy a deed. Oh, I see JJ. JJ says that you have to be a law to make it in, and Griffith's probably still only a bill. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. There's a nice little alley. Is this a public drinking fountain or something? Oh, nice green banner. It's a story there. Okay. Rune Keeper Trainer. Okay. I wish to be wise like that swan knight and judge men's words by their faces. Oh, yeah, that nice guy downstairs. Ah, oh, big old training hall. Oh, look! Somebody with a quest! Hard to believe. Der Vorin, heir of Ringwell Vale! All right, now hang on a second. Hang on a second. Let's see. To Eastern Gondor. To Central Gondor. Yeah. All right. So that Ringlow Vale was Ethering. I'm trying to remember the actual quest attack because it was a while ago now. You're from Ethering? Dervorin? With the women and children gone, this I'm city Dur truly is I am Dervorin from Ringlow Vale. What brings you to Minas Tirith on the eve of battle? You explain that you're an acquaintance of Mithrandir. That's how we're introducing ourselves? Yes, because Mithrandir is collecting halflings. And you tell Dervorin that you have recently passed through Ringlow Vale yourself. You have? You must tell me of your time in the Vale. Come meet me upon the wall and we shall talk some more. I'd love to. Speak with him upon the wall of the second circle. That sounds great. A little walking and talking quest? Who says no? Oh, we can get into the training ground. I'm going to be watching your cummerbunds, I can tell you. See how violent a place this really is. Uh, Harnian. 
Master at arms. When the time comes to fight, we'll be ready. Some restless soldiers are in need of a new opponent with whom they can sharpen their skills before the coming battle. I've heard your name whispered between citizens and soldiers alike, boasting of your prowess in battle and helpful demeanor. Of course I will aid you. Who? It's an instance? I am so ready. Check this out, Burgle. You'll like this. Oh, good. He's coming with me. Is he going to pitch in? Bro, you gonna come along and kick their shins while we fight? Let's see. The enemies of men approach. I the hope threat of battle prepared. has been lingering for quite some time now, and the soldiers have grown restless from anticipation. A sparring session will do them some good. It will help them practice, but it may also relieve some of their nerves. If you think you can take them, head on down to the center of the room. Okay. Sure. Oh, look at all these named dudes. New challenger. I'll make a dramatic entrance. Ta-da! Virgo is making a much less dramatic entrance. This is who Harnian sent to spar with us? Oh, yeah? Come on, now. Oh, is that what you think? Huh? Yeah, you better yield. I'm going to sick Virgo on you. Okay. Now what? That was Ladendor. Who's this? Adonir. Okay. Woo, little knockback, Adonir, huh? You got that hammer working. That was nice. Oh, come on now. Be a good loser. Handle two of you? Sure. Who are you? Kados and what's your name? Fembo. Kados and Fembo, huh? Sure, yeah, let's do this. Just wanted to give you a head start here while I figured out your names. You weren't ready? Oh, but the other guy is. Okay, <laughs> but because he didn't die, the targeting didn't move on from him. You don't even have any words. I must be getting tired. Hey, don't attack Burgill. That's just rude. I'm strong. Well, really agile more than strong. Humph. Okay. All right, uh, 10 seconds to prepare. Should be more than I need. Okay, Sirah. I feel like just saying your name is like a Shakespearean insult. Not for all three of you? Sure, come on. There you go. Sure, let's do this. How about that? Here's how you stun everybody and then take them all down. Are you guys the boss fight? You have more practicing to do? Yes, you do. Kirdir, huh? Come back if, you're, if I have strength left to walk? Ah, oh, sure. Barely breaking a sweat. We can only hope that the Rohirrim That's sure to humble them a bit. They'll certainly late. redouble their training after that showing of skill, with or without my orders. Excellent. The soldiers deserve a bit of a rest. Man, I... Should I tell Baragon that they were just, like, assaulting his son in here? It's like attacking random children. is not very cool. Oh. We're outside the training ground? Is there anything else to do? I'm just... I didn't... Like, he was right by the door. What is there? Oh, currency exchange. Crafting. 
I see. So this doubles as like, so it's like a skirmish camp. Okay, I see. Good to know, never know. Okay, <clears throat> let me go over to the other side there. I did see another quest. Yeah. Okay, Grad Gradir and Taurus, huh? What have we here? A burglar, is it? Time comes to fight. Perhaps, perhaps you can help us ready. settle this matter. You see, my friend and I cannot come to an agreement. We have argued back and forth and then forth and back, and I will confess that in a heated moment, Tawaris here has even wagered good Gondorian gold if he should be proven wrong. Come now, you'll hear us out, won't you? Sure. Is this your first time in Did you see death? the pier up there? Or Shame the ship's prow, as some call it. Well, a man told me that the winds race up there. Winds race up its face so fiercely you couldn't walk off it if you tried. You'd be shoved back. Um, no. No. The enemy what a load of fish approach. guts. First off, the winds clearly run prepared. along the pier down from the tower and fall to the land below. Winds going up. Ha! Doesn't rain fall? Has anyone ever seen rain fly up the pier? No, my friends. The winds go down, not up. So say I. And you say otherwise. How shall we settle this? There's gold in your pockets, Tawaris. That should really be mine. What do you say to this? Our burglar friend here carries a chicken up to the pier's end and tosses it off. If it comes back, you've won. Down it goes, I've won. Tawaris nods in agreement, and the, and the two look at you expectantly. I'll save you the chore of carrying a hen straight from the first circle. Wait a second. This guy is trying to make less... Busy work for Grifflet? You, sir, are unique in the annals of Lotro. Uh, there are some hens in the court of Arnil, up in the third circle. Go for one of those. The chicken toss. This is spectacular. I cannot wait. I will be... I cannot even tell you how happy I will be to throw a chicken off the end of the pier up there. Yes, sir. Um, where am I supposed to meet Dervorin? Help me, map. Oh, down there, yeah? No, that's the wager. <clears throat> this is the vague area in which chickens are to be found. Here there be hens. Okay. News from Ethering. Oh, way over there. Still not there yet. Okay. So, tell you what. Burgill, let's find the rude guy, and then after we settle with him, then we can go back up on the wall. Ah, the feast hall. Am I gonna tell me I get a feast hall deed? No, come on. How many, like, pointless, non-deed bearing plaques have there been? How could the enemy have broken through the Ramas Echor? I heard there was fire. It's true. It's true. I won't ask why you're still here. I'm sure you have some essential job. Okay. More trainers. We continue to be in the wielding yard. We must be getting close to where that guy's supposed to be. Yeah, in fact, he's here. Where is he? Well, there he is. Oriat. Here he is, Bargill. Oriel stands waiting, but he is not alone. Look here, boys. What, are you going to gang up on me? You know how well that goes. Mordor will regret challenging the walls of Minas Tirith. Got a spine then, after all, have we? I reckon there was a chance you might, so I made sure I had some friends at hand. <laughs> Why should I chance a wound for the sorry likes of you? Really? Okay. So we're... Um, why can I... Oh, I'm tar... Why can I not tar... Oh, hang on. Having targeting issues. There we go. Okay.
You yield, you never bargain for this. Hang on, let me get your other dude. Hanar. Okay, you give in. Okay, Ariat. Lay off, you devil, it hurts. Listen here, boy, you've won protection while your champion walks with you, but if I catch you or any other child here in the second circle alone, it's more than a box deer you will have for me. Well, that was unsatisfying. So first he acts dishonorably. Then he continues to threaten Burgil's... I'm going to tell your dad. That's what I'm going to do. Um, wait, somebody was a hemming? Who's a hemming, Griffith? What do you have to say about this matter? You showed Ariad a thing or two. Well, yes, but... Oh, this is the guy from downstairs. The enemies of men approach. I hope you are prepared. You showed bravery just now, both of you. Sometimes we rush into a fight that might be averted. Other times we do what must be done, even though the consequences of our acts bring us no good fortune. You must ask yourself which you have chosen. But regardless of what lesson you draw, you will live with the result. You have won yourself freedom in the first circle, but neither you nor any of the other children should venture up here anymore. Oriat will surely do you harm. I read that plainly in his eyes. Yeah, can't we do something about him? Um, I mean, like, is there no, um, like, really dangerous scouting duty to send him on or something? Not venture into the second circle. I suppose we dare not, lest Oriad find us. Oh, Grifflet, what have we done? Somehow I felt for sure, if only you bested Oriat, he would never trouble us any more. We had better not stay. I shall go back to the old guest house now. I must think and talk with the other children. Okay. I'll meet you there. We'll make a plan. Leaving me to follow him. Okay, so what is going to be my approach here? When... So when my side quests are sending me up, I just wait. I'm going to wait until I organically get there. So, like, I won't finish the uh, Cloudy Heads quest until I organically get up to the fifth circle. That's fine. But when they send me back, this is the first one that's sending me back down. I think what I should do is not go up to the next circle until I've finished all the ones further down. So I'll go down, I'll go back down to the first level prior to going up to the third level. I think that's what I'll do. Okay, so I'll finish this level and then uh, I'll go back down and find Burgill and then we'll see. The Wayne Rider's head, huh? Hooray! A discoverable plaque! Do they have another Tengwar sign? No. Oh. No, they don't even have an openable door. How do I get into the pub? Is, it, is this an outdoor pub? It's like an open air pub. They have a roof. I guess it's fairly temperate here. It's an open air pub. I guess. Do they, I was wanting to see if they had an actual Wayne Rider's head. Like, did they taxidermy it or something? Huh. Okay. Oh. Stonework looks a little older over here. Maybe it's just, uh, you know, uh, damp in this part of the city for some reason. All right, and here we are. This is the end, right? Yeah. Here's the end of the second tier. You best believe the Minas Tirith will hold, or you're no better than a servant of Mordor. I would speak with the tongue of Melko. Is that what you're saying, if I say the Minas Tirith will fall? City jail. Okay. Ooh, new deed! <laughs> Another one. Nice. There are only five workings. Wouldn't the laundry... Shouldn't the laundry count as one of the workings of Minas Tirith? Come now. 
The Hall of Laws. Hey, I found the Hall of Laws. Why did the Hall of Laws not start this? That is not right. That's so strange. I clicked on the Hall of Laws plaque. Hmm. Huh. Known as Gatterost, dug into the side of Mindaluin. It houses many cells where common folk are held after judgment is passed. Okay, uh, House of Clamor? Oh, can't wait for that. Chambers of the City and Dome of the Sun. Okay. Why did the Hall of Laws not start this? Hi, can I go into jail? I've done so many different quests in jails. I've investigated crimes. I've instigated breakouts. Pretty much anything you could do in a prison, I've done it. Well, that isn't true, I suppose. Okay. Anyway, who's this guy? Just leaning over here. Just hanging out. Don't you have anything to be forging? Wrongly accuse some poor sap in cliving. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've gotten people arrested. I've gotten people set free. Hey, Kelon Kelonor. Hello, dude with name. I suppose I'll be coming back to see you at some point. What are you looking at? The only approach to the city that you can't get up to? Like you're keeping a sharp eye on the... Giving a sharp eye on the one place from which the enemy certainly cannot come. Ah, there's my friend. Let's talk about Ethering and the Ringlow Vale. I think I met your parents. I am to be the Lord of Ringlow Vale one day. We I do not wish for that day to come, as my father, Borhador, is a good man. Late. He may be weary in his old age. He was the guy who was, like, hiding in the... Yeah, it's all coming back to me now, Devorn. Uh, yeah, I had quests with, like, the dead there. Yeah, your place is... Your home is being invaded by, like, the unquiet dead, but I helped take care of that problem. He may be weary in his old age, but my father still has a commanding spirit and a great judgment of character. Now tell me of your time in the Vale. You tell Dvorin about your adventures with his brother Arvithor, of course, and Borhador's renewed spirits after the great darkness caused sadness and fear in all who dwelled in the Vale. Yeah, a renewed his spirits. We're gazing at Mindaluan? Okay. Yeah. Tall and majestic. It is pretty majestic. When the time comes to fight. Mount Mindaluin is part of the same mountain range that looms over the Ringlow Vale. When I look at the mountainside, I often think of my home in Ethering. I am glad my father is leading the people again. I know how much he wanted to march to Minas Tirith. I feared my leaving would sadden him since his age and health prevented him from leaving Ethering. It is good to hear that my brother and you have become friends. He will one day be a great warrior, and I am sure you helped him immensely. I, I hope that I will be able to help Ethering by being here. Thank you for your news of Ethering and the Vale. I have a horrible feeling that Devorn is going to die in the battle, which is why I'm getting to know him so well. He seeks to make his family proud. Oh, man. Here's curtains for you, Devorn. <coughs> okay. All right. Um, and I think that concludes the second tier, pretty much. Yeah. Trying to make your family proud immediately before the greatest battle of their time is, um, well, it, there's risk. There's risk. Okay. All right, guys, I'll get a chicken. I'll be right back. Devorin beat me down here somehow. Okay. Um, then what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to go and see my friend the Staple Master. Only way it could be worse is if he were three days from retirement. All right, Hall of Laws. Hall of Laws, not interested in me reading its plaque when I read its plaque before. Of course I discovered the Hall of Laws plaque. I discovered it before. Um, okay, I still have a ways to go, so let's mount up. Look at you, Grifflet. You're doing a, t a tier a week at this point. Man, we'll be done with Minas Tirith in no time at all, unless there's much more Tengwar for me to practice. Yes, uh, um, Matt Cannon, known as Evil Dr. Cannon uh, in uh, Discord, and uh, Chad Bornholt, uh, Chad from Texas, uh, were both at TexMoot, and they did a presentation. Uh, am I there? I am there. There you are, hiding behind the column. Um, they, they did a presentation on TexMoot, which was a, a, a you know, they, they did a, a workshop on Gondor learning needs your aid. And it was phenomenal. They did an awesome job. And I learned so much. Okay. Just goes to show you're never too old. Okay. Okay, Virgil, there you are. What do you say? What fun we've had strolling about. I will not let that last grim turn spoil my enjoyment of the day, and I hope you won't either. Still, it will not be hard not going to any upper circles. I owe it to the others to find some way out of this or around it. If I can, it will still be hard not. I know. Let's figure it out. Let's 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 work on this. Have I mentioned I am friends with the Prince of the Halflings? Now that I think of it, there may be a way around the second circle. No, let's let's like let's get Oriad arrested. How about that? I mean, he's like assaulting people. There may be a way around the second circle, but or like, can we at least publicly shame him? I mean, that was really reprehensible behavior. I'm not okay with letting Oriad go. Okay. I heard that within the city cisterns, you may climb right up to the fourth circle, which is just where we wish to go. Well, no, it isn't. I want to go to the third circle. Only we'd never be allowed in through the clean waters, not by ourselves, not whenever we pleased. There is a hidden entrance, though, by the Wrights Fellow Hall that is seldom used. And as it should happen, one of the keys for it was lost just last week. I know because I heard Master Carathon cursing out the lad who lost it. If it could be found, if you could find it, why then? We'd be one step closer to that secret passage. Oh man, I thought we were going to have a quest where we were talking about bringing Oriat to justice. Look for the key. Zero of six. Zero of six places I'm supposed to look for the key. Okay. Well, we'll find the key, but I'm not 100% sure I want to do the Clean Waters quest because I don't want to. Should I? I think I'll come back and do that when it's time for the fourth tier. I think I'll do the third tier first. But I'll find the key first. Oh, Edith, I know Devorin is not in the song, but I'm worried that, like, there might be people not in the song who die nevertheless. If you were in the song, you know, I'd have been lamenting him long since. Okay, so I don't understand. Hang on, let me get off my horse. What's the zero of six? Like, six what? Okay, yeah, there's a... Oh, hang on, hang on. Six places where the lost can... So, there are only six spots on the ground. The key is definitely lost in a place that is glowing and shining with light. 
The question is just which of those six, because nobody else thinks to look at the places that are like glowing radiance off the ground. Okay. Oh, hang on. Here we go. We're looking for the lost key. Okay. I'm presuming it's in the last of the six. Okay. The Wright's Fellow Hall. Looking for perspective key locations. The Laughing Halfling. Delightful name. Uh-oh. Watch out for this guy, guys. Both of you. Is there a fight club here, too? Those guys look pretty rough. It's not going to be, like, in the stores, is it? Can I even get in there? I love standing right in front of the targets for archery practice. It's just basic self-preservation. Okay. Um, did I? No? Okay. I'm still in the running for lost key places, but I suspect this is out of it. Well, not quite. I did get this. <gasps> did I miss this when I was here? Oh man, I did. It's a good thing I get them getting sent up and back all over the place. This one I must have gotten. Yeah, this one I did get. And that one. On to here. Yeah, I remember getting that. Okay, I don't think the key is dropped over here. No. Uh, what are you talking about, Metagroth? Oh! <laughs> so I love the uh this is this is to, it's to me a really funny thing. Um the use of the word sellout. It's like a favorite troll word. I mean, I get called it all the time, obviously. But like don't people realize that selling out requires money? Like, that's kind of part of the deal there. It's just that the whole notion of calling somebody who, like, disagrees with you a sellout is a strange kind of concept. Like, think about it. What is behind that? That is, like, what's the sort of principle there? Okay, there's a suspicious character that I've already beaten up over here, but no key. Um... Hey, Manigroth, why shouldn't there be people with different skin colors in Brie? I don't understand. Like, is there an in-game reason why that... Like, is there an in-world reason why that shouldn't happen? Oh, here we go. I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense to me. Oh, no, this is one I already looked at. Oh, well, that's one I haven't looked at yet, though. No, seriously, Brie is a crossroads. People travel from all over the place to get to Brie. And, and would have done... For thousands of years. I would expect a crossroads city like that on the major northwest route, which correct which connects the extreme north and the extreme south parts of this continent, and has done for thousands of years, 
uh, to be a very racially mixed population. Why shouldn't it be? I don't understand. Is there a way in which that doesn't make sense? Yeah, the books do make clear that it's a place where hobbits and men gather from all over. Yeah, and I mean, the Breelanders have been there for a long time. But again, during that long time, it's been a major route from all over the place. And yes, the road connects. The, of course, the road is built by the Gondorians between Minas Tirith and uh, Fornost up in the north. Um, but of course, Minas Tirith itself then, you know, has roads and travel all the way down into Harad and Rune. So, yeah. I mean, again, like, over the course of, like, would there never have been merchants who came? And perhaps some who said, I mean, like, Bree is literally the most likely place to be a uh, racially diverse location. I mean, historically speaking. Um, yeah, um, the person who wants those changes, I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't understand. I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying the, the objection does not to me make any sense. never has made any sense from an in-world standpoint. I mean, I'm a medievalist. Even in the Middle Ages, there was, like, way more travel uh, and, like, ethnic mixing in different places than people generally assume. Um, Phil, well, that's the, the problem is that people apply modern day prejudices to olden times as well. Um, but anyway, uh, okay, so another key. I still haven't found the last key spot. I feel like I've searched all these places a bunch of times. That's a pretty wide area for one last key spot to be in. Okay, no, that's a workbench. And I am totally going around spamming the delete key at this point. Okay. Right, here's the place with the suspicious dude again. All five of the others have been outdoors, so I assume that this one is outdoors, too. <gasps> there it is. Okay, no key. Oh! A belated notification that I found the key. Okay. Uh, let's mount up.
This is the South Gate House. Guest House, rather. Not the old guest house. I was confused for a moment. Okay. I knew you would find it while you have been searching. I have spoken with the others in Gelwin and Glotham have asked if they can come along. Would you lead the three of us into the cisterns? Speak with Gelwin first, huh? Okay, Gelwin, what do you think? So you are Grifflet. It is a pleasure to meet you. Burgo has told us of your adventure together and his plan. The others all think that the secret walker lives in the cisterns and are afraid to set foot inside. I think they are wrong and that the secret walker is nothing but a story to scare little girls and boys. In addition, I wish more than anything to see inside the cisterns. I imagine it must be wondrous and beautiful. Therefore, my brother and I wish to go with you. If you agree, then let us meet within the door. Okay. Okay. But I think I'm not going to do it. I think I'm going to pursue my former plan. Because I don't want to go all the way up to the player's tier. And skip the craftsman's tier. So I'm going to leave Burgo behind. And uh, then we'll come back. Oh, hey, look. A sign. Okay. So that's an S. Okay, so here's the fun thing. The, big, the first letter and the last letter of this word are both S's. You can do the S either way, um, up or down. And it, you do it down usually when you want to put the diacritic on top, you see? Uh, you, you, you got the A uh, diacritic up there. And it, it, like it's awkward. There's not, not a place to put it here, so you flip it over, right? And that's pretty awesome. Okay, so this is S. And that's an N. It looks like an M, but an M has a closed bow. So it has the line along the bottom. So like that's a closed bow. Um, so that's an N. So S, N, and then that's an E. Um, so it would be S, E, N, A, S. Senas. Uh, Senas. And again, assuming, yeah, this is, uh, this is Cinderin as well, not Quenya. Uh, and so this, okay, closed bow, ascender to the left. Oh, this one, hang on, that one's tricky. Um, it's got an ascending stem, which means it's a fricative and not a plosive. Um, if it were to the right, the closed bow would be an F. So this is an unvoiced fricative on the far right. Huh. If I'm not mistaken, that's the H sound. I think it is. Hang on, I gotta check. I totally have a cheat sheet. Uh, yes, I'm right. Okay, that's the h sound. Uh, so if it were doubled, if this were a double bow to the left with the uh, with the rising stem, then it would be the voiced version of that, which is h. So that would be how you would spell Hanbury, Han's name, for instance. So rising stem with the one, so that's a h. And then uh, that's an r. Huh. Why are they using that R because it's not before a vowel it's after a vowel got it because it's an R N um, so uh, then that's an A so that's Harn Harn uh, so that is that says Senos Harn gotcha gotcha okay good good yeah oh man when we get to the Druid on forest yeah yeah there's gonna be uh some need for long, for lozenges. Uh, Senas Harn, which is the South Gate House. There it is again, Senas Harn. Senas Harn. It is hard since um, I'm an English speaker uh, and thus I'm not used to making the H consonant. Um, it's hard just to like let it roll off, you know what I mean? Um, like I tend to make it really harsh because I, I'm, you know, I'm all like, uh, geared up for it <laughs> and everything. Um, you know, I'm not like a Dutch speaker or a Hebrew speaker who just kind of like can toss it out there like any other consonant, you know, so. Um, 
You don't make those in Spanish either? Yeah. yeah I know it's hard when you, when, you, when you come across a consonant which you just don't make in your language. Um, vowels are easier, I think. Even vowels which are unlike ones that we use. It's hard to do it naturally. But, I, it's, but it's not hard to make. Like if I just like, I want to make that vowel. But yeah, strange consonants are... Uh, uh, different. Also, oh, Phil, you can't um, you can't roll R's. Well, that I've had a little bit more practice in. I can make the ch sound in the middle of um, of words, like because they do that in Middle English. Um, so I, I have a lot of practice in reading Middle English. Oop, just no. Did I miss it? No, I did miss it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like to practice in Middle English. So like the GHT, like uh, the word, uh, uh, of course, everyone's favorite, the word night, like K-N-I-G-H-T, is knicht uh, in uh, Middle English. So you do the GH as a uh, sound. Um, but like, again, when it comes to the beginning, I'm always, like, when I'm starting a word with uh, I, I'm always like focusing on it. Um... Okay, Sodomar of the Silver Gate. We're continuing up through the gates of Gondolin. I mean, Minister. This gate lies the third circle. I will teach you the, the greater password tier. for the Silver Gate. The word is the password is Anarian. It's not very secure passwords. You will find it easy to remember, for he was the son of Elendil who ordered the construction of this city. Okay, in-game explanation is that Anarian ordered the construction, so he started it from scratch. At that time, it was called Minas Anor, the Tower of the Sun, though it has since been renamed Minas Tirith, the Tower of Guard. Beyond this gate lies the third circle of the city, the Craftsman's Tier. This tier of the city houses shops and smithies, as well as the clothier's market and fellow hall. Builders and merchants will find much to attend their needs on this tier of the city, as will any who seek the auctioneers at the House of Clamor. <laughs> yes, autoflagellator says your password must include a number, a non-numeric character, and an air of a Lindell. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Look at that. And here we are on the craftsman's tier. Gondor needs your aid. Having completed, mostly completed, tiers one and two. And we're out of time. Okay. Look at that. See, a tier a week, right? At this rate, we'll be done with Minas Tirith in no time. I only have, like, 20-odd kings and... Anyway, yeah. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. We're, we're making such fast progress through the city. I just have to go back down to the cisterns at some point after I finish Tier 3. So before I get to Tier 4, we'll take Burgil's secret way up to Tier 4. Um, but, um, but we'll finish Tier 3 first. Excellent. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining me today. Um, look, for, I should be back again next week. I should be here for several weeks in a row, actually. Um, yeah. At, pro at least up until Maple Moot. Uh, we're having an, a moot in Toronto. Very excited about that. Our first ever Canadian moot uh, for Signum. So that'll be great fun. Um, uh, but Maple Moot is on the 20th of May in Toronto. Um, so I may be traveling on the 19th of Friday before that. But I think I'll be here until then. So Griffith can make some excellent Minas Tirith progress over the course of this next, uh, over the course of this next month. All right. Very good. Thanks, everybody. Uh, and I will see you guys soon. Druid's Fire is next. Bye now. Thanks for joining in on my rambles around Standing Stone's brilliant digital adaptation of Tolkien's world. If you enjoy these adventures, please consider supporting this and other entertaining educational programming by donating at signumuniversity.org fund.